Hands up if you've bought some pasta, rice, or tin tomatoes in the last week or so. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us have done that, and the basic ingredients that we buy from the supermarkets are the things that we then use in lots of different meals. And a recent re uh, survey from Oxfam revealed that pasta was indeed the world's favorite dish. Now, when you bought those items of staple food, though, I imagine it was a pretty routine, entirely uneventful experience. My dream is to change that, not by changing the food, not by changing the recipes, but by making our purchases benefit people in the UK who can't afford to eat. As consumers, I believe we have immense power, and I'd like to share with you how by making a small change to our shopping habits, we can help to end food poverty in our country. Now, for many of us here today, our biggest dilemma is deciding what to eat for our next meal. But for a growing number of people, the decision is heat or eat. Should I put the heating on or eat a decent meal? Sadly, in a lot of cases, the decision is to go hungry. My partner, Sophia, teaches in a primary school in a deprived area and understands the issue well. She teaches kids that look forward to coming back to school after the holidays, not because they're so keen to start learning again, but because they'll receive a decent meal. Researchers have found the best way to raise standards is simply to give kids a good breakfast. Poor eating means poor learning. Now we have more than enough food to go around in our country. But the problem that we've got is one of balance, and people of all ages are still going hungry. It's crazy to think that, as a country, we throw away over 10 million tonnes of food every single year, and yet approximately 1 million people require food banks. Closer to home, at the Fair Share Manchester Food Bank, where I was a volunteer, they support approximately 13,000 people every week. Now, if you weren't aware, food banks provide emergency food parcels to people in crisis, and they also supply food to community groups who help cook meals for people in need. They do this all year round in line with demand. Your nearest Trussell Trust food bank is less than a mile from here in Burn Grieve. And like a lot of food banks, it operates from a community centre. However, you may be shocked to hear that food banks now also operate from schools, and also hospitals too. Whilst I was volunteering, I visited a food bank that operated from a school in the shadow of the Etihad Stadium, home to the incredibly wealthy Manchester City football team. The contrasting fortunes of the people who need the food bank and the wages of the professional footballers really alarms me. How can such a supposedly rich, developed country have so much inequality? Now, the football team relies on its supporters in the same way that food banks rely upon their volunteers. Maybe you know someone who helps out, or perhaps you yourself are one of those selfless volunteers. You would know then that people who require the use of food banks are not scroungers. People are referred to food banks for a variety of different reasons. They may have recently lost their job, homeless, caught in a debt spiral, in a lot of cases, simply just waiting for their benefit payments to be processed. Now, regardless of the reason, in times of trouble, many of us would no doubt turn to our friends or family for support. But for a lot of people, that simply isn't an option. And it explains why the role of food banks is bigger than just providing food. Over a cup of tea, staff and volunteers remind people that someone genuinely cares. And it's in these conversations taking place up and down our country that give people the strength and the confidence to carry on in the face of tough times. Now, we can't hide from the fact that the need for food banks is real and that people who use them deserve our support. I think the main thing that we have to think about going forwards is how we can change this. And so last... Um, Last year, I pitched an idea to the School for Social Entrepreneurs, an amazing organization that helps people to set up businesses whose primary purpose 
is to help create positive social impact. My idea was inspired by Tom's, a shoe company set up by Californian Blake Mykoski, who pioneered the one-for-one -one business model. One-for-one -one is where a person in need benefits with every purchase made. So in the case of Tom's, every time you buy a pair of their shoes, they donate another pair of shoes to a child in a developing country. Now, when Blake first shared his idea, some people laughed. They thought it was ridiculous. But since 2006, Tom's has put shoes on the feet of over 35 million children in the developing world. What an incredible achievement. Now, there's something really tangible about One for One. The same product you buy is the same product that's donated. And the person who benefits knows that someone cares. So last year, I asked myself the question, what if shoppers could choose food with, with a purpose? Food that feeds you and someone in need. Could the one-for-one -one business model provide a solution that helps those in need to bounce back? From that point on, it became my mission to give shoppers the choice. And so I created Bounce Back Food. We're a proud social enterprise that sells quality pasta, rice, and tin food on a one-for-one -one basis. We work at market stores and we also sell online. The same product you buy is the same product that we then donate to your nearest Fair Share or Trussell Trust Food Bank, the two largest food bank operators in the UK. So if you buy a bag of pasta, we donate a bag of pasta. If you buy a bag of rice, we donate a bag of rice. We also run food workshops that teach people how to eat well for less too. It's important that we help people all year round. Now, I believe that the idea has the scale and the sustainability to help solve the problem because it creates value for people at every level. Food banks get more of the food they need. Consumers get the chance to help someone in their community. And as a social entrepreneur, I achieve my goals. Last December, I trialled the idea for the very first time a year ago to the day on Small Business Saturday in Salford at Broughton's Market where we secured our first 50 food bank donations just in time for Christmas. By summer this year, we'd reached 1,000. Our food bank donations have now contributed to over 5,000 meals, thanks to the generosity of our customers. Now, as we grow, it's important that we continue to support food banks up and down the country. And whilst working on the markets, I've had a lot of conversations with people, mainly about the weather, but there have been some other conversations too. And it is important because when I tell people about the scale of the problem, they're often shocked. However, they like the simplicity of our idea, how easy it is to make a difference, and the respect that it offers the food bank beneficiaries. Now, one conversation stands out more than most. I was trading at Altrincham Market when a middle-aged guy came over to our store to find out what we were all about. We had a great conversation, and he ended up buying several items of food. But just before he left, he turned and said, I've been there. You're doing a great job. Now, I knew in that moment that we were on the right track. Bounce Back Food gives shoppers the chance to buy food products with a purpose. Donating food is easy, and it's at the core of what we do and why we do it. One for you, one for society, has been embraced by people who like our proactive approach to tackling food poverty. These people may not be hungry themselves always, but they are hungry for change. In 2016, we want to extend our social impact so that we can support food banks up and down the country on a regular basis. We want our products with a purpose to become an option on your weekly shop. The idea of a family sitting down for a meal, knowing that another family in their community hasn't had to face the heat or eat dilemma, to me is beautifully balanced and just feels right. Social enterprises like Tom's and Bounce Back Food were started with a clear purpose to help solve big problems through meeting our needs as consumers. Now I get really inspired to think about how quickly we can begin to help solve this problem. 
There's no technological barrier, no breakthrough required, no laws need to change. Now, none of us want food banks to be around forever. Surely, we just want a society where people in crisis get the help they deserve. To achieve this change, food retailers need to recognise the role they could play by stocking more products with a purpose. And as consumers, we need to remember the power of our purchases. Give us the choice and we'll help those in need to bounce back. Thank you. Thank you.